Hello and welcome. My name is Melissa Demo. Thanks for joining me for this online cough drop implementation session. My goal today is to help you better understand cough drop and how AAC can benefit those that you work with. So let's get started. This is my niece, Becca. She was born with Rett syndrome, which left her unable to speak and she has very poor motor control. So she can't really control her arms and hands and, and do things um, that a lot of people can. Her parents quickly realized she would not be able to communicate without support. At first, they helped Becca learn to say yes and no, just using her eyes. But soon, they moved on to augmentative communication, and it has been really incredible to watch. I want to share one experience that happened recently. Uh, Becca's parents went to the grocery store and found this really strange piece of fruit that's called a Buddha hand fruit um, while they were in the produce section. They decided to buy it and take it home so that they could show it to their children. So they took it home and their kids were kind of exploring it and feeling its tendrils and kind of getting to know the fruit. And they asked Becca if she wanted to have a turn to touch the fruit and kind of see what it was like. And she said, yeah, she did. So they took it over to her and they used her hand to kind of touch the outside. It has kind of a bumpy skin, sort of like an orange and they touched it and let her kind of explore it a little bit. And pretty quick, she had a message that she wanted to share with them about this particular piece of fruit. She said, stop, never want. And everybody laughed and thought it was kind of funny, but they obviously took the, the fruit away and didn't make her continue to touch it. But this is one of those times when it would have been very difficult for them to understand what it was she wanted to communicate to them if she didn't have um, AAC available to her. People need to be able to communicate all kinds of different things so that we can know what they think and feel, what they need and what they know. Everyone deserves a way to communicate with others. Our voice is how we connect with the world. It is through communication that we learn, that we make choices, that we express ourselves, that we interact with others, that we build relationships. AAC makes these connections possible for people who can't speak vocally. It's not just a system to vocalize words. It enables people to make connections. But we have to remember that learning to use AAC is learning a new language and that that takes time. Often with AAC, progress is slow. The growth often comes in very small steps stretched out over time. But when we persist and we stay focused, we can see great progress over the course of time. Professionals usually have the most training and understanding about AAC, but we need to keep reality in perspective. The bulk of a person's communication will be with their family. More of life is spent with family than a teacher or a therapist, and families don't change if you move or if you start a new program or get a new teacher. It's essential to empower and include families as part of the communication team in order for the most growth to take place in communication. And that's great because many families are willing to do AAC homework. Like for example, they may be assigned 10 minutes of modeling during dinner or after school, or you may ask them to incorporate a core vocabulary word of the week into their daily routine, and most of them will do it if given the chance. They want their, their child, their communicator, to grow and to progress. They want to know what's going on in, in that person's mind. AAC progress will go best when it is not limited to just the classroom or the therapy room. The more communication support an AAC user can get, the better. AAC takes a team, and that team might include the communicator, parents, teachers, therapists, paraprofessionals, or administrators. Communication opportunities will work best if we try to develop an integrated team approach. If everyone involved stays connected to the communicator, they will be supported and encouraged no matter where they are, and a cohesive strategy for learning will reach into every part of that person's life. While AAC is always about helping a communicator express themselves, Cough Drop works to support the entire team surrounding a communicator, not just the communicator, although we obviously want to focus on supporting that communicator. Cough Drop does have some built-in features that really help in this whole team approach. We have a speak mode modeling feature, which allows you to delineate between words selected by an AAC communicator and words used as modeled speech 
so that those two can be separate and you can really understand which things are being said and what kind of progress is being made. CoughDrop has an in-app in messaging feature, which allows supervisors to connect with everybody connected to the AAC communicator and send out a message that will link to everyone. So maybe you had a great day in therapy or uh, the communicator had an issue that you need to let everybody know about. You can message the entire team connected to the AAC communicator straight within the CoughDrop app. CoughDrop has built-in logs and reports, which allows you to get a view of what kind of communication is taking place, when it's taking place, and maybe who's modeling and who's not, so you have a better idea of how the team is functioning as a whole. CoughDrop does have supervisor functions, which allow you to connect to the communicator account, so that from your supervisor account, your free supervisor account, you can connect to the communicator speech boards, their preferences, their settings, and adjust all of those things from your own account. There's more than one supervisor option. You can have supervisors who can just view the account and supervisors who have been given permission to make adjustments um, so that maybe a prayer professional that you don't necessarily want to make changes to the board can still access the board so that they can speak with the communicator. CoughDrop also involves organization tools which are available for the an entire group. So maybe you have a school or a district um, that is using AAC and this will allow you to manage the supervisors, the communicators, everybody connected to AAC all within the CoughDrop program. Communication is a giant part of the learning process and AAC should be part of everything the AAC user does. Not only does it make communication possible in every situation, it also encourages and supports additional skills and learning. Some of the things that communication and AAC support are language learning, reading and writing, problem solving, motor skills, teamwork, and building of relationships. AAC is a benefit to all learning. It can even be helpful to allow AAC to be accessible to the entire class. After all, what's the downside of other students watching an AAC communicator compose a phrase, answer a question, or select words using AAC? When you point to words on a printed version of an AAC board or use a smart board to model words during a lesson, it reinforces language and concepts to the whole group, not just to the AAC user. Although it also validates AAC as an appropriate form of communication. When you are modeling with AAC and showing a communicator that using a word on a speech board is appropriate, it teaches them that this is an okay way to communicate and it teaches everybody else in the class to accept this form of communication as well. Available AAC can actually support learning for everyone in the classroom or the therapy room. So once you're ready to go and you have your communication team pumped and anxious to begin, that's where we at CoughDrop can help you to step in and really make a difference. So let's get started. First, you'll need to create a CoughDrop account. Because CoughDrop can function on nearly any device, it can be used by students in almost any situation. They can use their iPad at school, or they can open their account on their Kindle at home. They can pull it up on the web in the computer lab. And if a device is lost or broken, they are not stranded without a way to speak. The app is free to download, but you will need to create an account on the CoughDrop website before you can log in and begin to use the program. Once you've created an account, you can log into the program. Uh, one of the first things that you will see in CoughDrop is the Getting Started Guide, and this is obviously moving a lot faster than it does when you're using it, but we wanted you to kind of get a feel for what it's going to look like. Getting to new, a new program can be kind of overwhelming, so CoughDrop has created a Getting Started Guide to help walk you through the setup process and allow you to make some basic account choices without having to search for those settings within the program. This feature is pinned to your dashboard as well, so you can get to it at any time, or you can reach the full list of available settings on your preferences page within your account. One of the most important choices you'll need to make in your account is deciding on a home board, which is your starting place for communication within your account. While you can create boards from scratch, we suggest that you start with a core vocabulary board. Core vocabulary makes the most used words in, in our language available allowing a person to talk about any subject rather than being limited to words that relate to a particular idea or an activity. For example, maybe you have an art-related board for when you go into art class and it has words like paintbrush and paint and uh, color names and things like that. Well, what if your communicator wants to tell you about what they did last night? 
or if he has a question about something else you talked about in class? What if he has something to say that doesn't relate to art? Being stuck on that artboard doesn't help him with full communication. However, if you have a core vocabulary board available, they can talk about any subject um, and reach out about anything. So CopDrop has three built-in core vocabulary board sets, which are available to anybody who chooses to use them. The first one is called Quick Core 24. On this particular board set, there will be 24 words on each page and a total of more than 600 words available, all within one to three button presses. The next core board set is Quick Core 60, which has 60 words per page, which as you can see, the buttons are a little bit smaller, so you do have to take into account a person's fine motor skills and whether they're going to be able to navigate um, those particular board sets. But Quick Core 60 has more than 2,000 words available, and they are also available within one to three button, set, uh, button press. Our final and largest core board set is Quick Core 112. Uh, this is the most versatile vocabulary within the Cough Drop program. It has more than 4,500 words available within the board set, and they are all available with one to two button presses. So they're quickly able to be reached, and, and you're able to say a lot of different things in, in very few button presses. Once you've decided on a particular home board set, you can then personalize it to fit your needs. So CoughDrop born boards, the boards that are saved within the CoughDrop program and owned by the CoughDrop program, function a lot like a Google Doc. If you open a Google Doc, you can share that with lots of people all across the country or, or the world, and they can open that a link to that document and be able to see it and view what's on there. Um, the boards that are owned by CoughDrop are the same. Anybody anywhere can open those boards and be able to see them. However, if we let you make changes to the CoughDrop owned board, then when you add pictures of your family or your um, activity ideas, everybody everywhere is going to see those. And obviously that's not ideal. So what we do instead is we allow users to make their own copy of the CoughDrop owned boards and then they own those boards and they can adjust and tweak them in any way that they need. Once you've made a copy of a board set, it belongs to you in your account. It cannot be viewed by anybody else unless you share it with them. And, and you can adjust and tweak it to fit your particular needs. So at that point, once you've made your own copy of a board, or if you create a board from scratch, you can customize uh, the board to fit your needs. For example, I worked with a woman who lived in Australia, and she wanted her board to say vomit instead of throw up, because that was the more common word within her, her usage in her area. And so we, we were able to make that change for her. Also, um, you can choose to hide or show buttons as needed to preserve the motor plan on a particular board set while still not overwhelming a communicator. So maybe this is the, the Quick Core 24 board. Maybe you only want to have a few buttons showing at the beginning and then you move on to a few more and a few more and you'll notice the buttons stay in their same location so that the motor plan is preserved. The, the person can still find the button in exactly the same place that they're used to even when more buttons are, are added. So this is another option that's available within the CoughDrop program. While core vocabulary allows communicators to speak about any topic, there are obviously times when you will need fringe words. Um, you may need activity specific words, you may need a board that has some favorites, you may want a reward board that opens to video clips um, or songs or things like that. You may need social interactions board or a family and teachers board. You can store all of these on your cough drop sidebar for quick access without having them be in the way and disrupting your regular board set. When you come into cough drop, I'm gonna go into speak mode on my board set here. here and we you can go. see that here I have my quick course 60 board set available. I have a few things that I've added on the side, but I also have this button for the sidebar available and I can open my sidebar and see some of the things that I have pinned here. So I have a Spanish board, I have a jokes board, I have a favorite books board, um, the inflections are available here, and I also have this social board. So maybe I have some social things I want to say quickly. Good to see you. And I don't want to have to take the time to go find each of the, the individual buttons because I'm social interactions happen on a quick basis. I can access all of those things on the sidebar. Now I have my sidebar um, set to this small button at the top, but you can pin your sidebar in place so that it's constantly available and it's always right there, readily um, able to be reached for your particular communicator. So that sidebar makes it so that no matter which board I navigate to, I still have 
um, my sidebar kind available to me. All right. So once you have your home board and your sidebar all set and they're customized and ready for, for your use, you now have a fully functional communication set ready for any situation. So obviously at this point you can hand a device to the communicator and they will start speaking in full sentences and just be ready to go and it'll be great, right? Well, no, of course not. You have a board set ready to go, but now what? Just like learning any new language, the communicator needs to be immersed in the language in order to begin to grow. It's a good idea to let them peruse and explore this new vocabulary. Let them push the buttons and try different things and get to know how the program works. But even more important is that you begin to model words and phrases and features for your communicator. Um, some ways to do that are model the main word while you are talking to an AAC user. So don't, don't worry about modeling each word that you're saying in a phrase, but maybe you're going to go to the library. So maybe you want to say, we are going to go, and you model go to the library. Or maybe you want to model library. We are going to go to the library and show where the library button is. Um, model those main words within a sentence to allow the communicator to start to understand how to express them and to know where they are located within the program. Uh, model searching for a particular word. CoughDrop has a search feature within speak mode, and we'll look at that, at that in a little bit, which allows you to find a word. And there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I'm not sure where that is. Let's, let's see if we can find it. That models for the communicator that, first of all, it's okay to not know where something is located. And secondly, it shows them how to fix that problem, how to find things when they, when they want to find a particular issue. You can also use the CoughDrop Communication Workshop to model words and phrases. CoughDrop manages a communication workshop website, which provides activity ideas, modeling opportunities, printables, books, and more to support learning of specific core vocabulary words. So let's head over there real quick. You can reach this workshop by going to workshop.openaac.org, and then you can select a particular word and reach all kinds of activities and ideas relating to that word. Um, so you can have modeling suggestions, uh, go there, or go back, or go crazy, different levels of modeling. But there are also additional resources available. You have learning projects, activity ideas, there are books, there are sent homes, there are videos that all relate to this particular core word in this in this opportunity, it's, it's go. But you can find these resources that are available to help you support core vocabulary learning or hand it to the parents or the teacher and say, hey, here's something that you can use with the communicator to be able to better understand how to use this new language, this new AAC device. When we get back to modeling, um, it's a good idea to get the rest of the communication team involved, focused on certain words for a week or a month. You may want to have a core word of the week, or you may want to set a particular goal and ask everybody to work toward that goal. Hey, I want them to use their AAC device five times a day. And let's make a chart and check it off five times a day. That is something that you could track within the, the CoughDrop program. CoughDrop will, will watch that for you and let you know when it's achieved. But you can also do it externally and just uh, let everybody be part of that modeling opportunity. Be sure that you model language in lots of different situations, like in the library and at lunch and during speech and at recess as part of reading time. Communication happens everywhere, and it's important for an AAC communicator to see that it's okay to communicate in all those different places. So now you're modeling speech, you're working with a communicator, and we have an additional help that can be a support for you on that. CoughDrop offers free supervisor accounts to those that are supervising an AAC communicator. Your account will stay free as long as you are linked to an AAC communicator, and you'll have full access to the program as long as you stay connected. You can supervise multiple communicators within this program. That's one of the benefits. So you can have more than one communicator linked to your dashboard and you can access their speech boards and buttons um, all from your one login. So you don't have to log in and out of different accounts in order to reach different communication, excuse me, different communicators, speech boards or settings. And I'll show you that in a little bit when we get into the program. In addition, being a supervisor allows you to view logs and reports for every person you supervise so that you can track learning and growth and you can see that all from within your own account. You don't have to log into their individual accounts in order to do that. 
You can also mes message everyone connected to an AAC Communicators account to share successes, um, post updates, or encourage a weekly focus or set a goal um, that everybody can then be part of. For groups like schools and districts or AAC-focused organizations, CoughDrop has an organization tool which helps you tra keep track of communicators, supervisors, and usage all from within the CoughDrop app. Within the organization tool, you can assign multiple AAC communicators to a specific teacher or room or group, and then you can adjust the group members or the teacher as needed um, as you move forward. You can see reports for individual communicators, or you can see communication information for a specific group or class, or you can look at the reports for the entire organization and see how the, the group as a whole is doing when it comes to communication. Within the organization tool, you can also purchase accounts for your organization, and then you can distribute them to specific communicators as needed. You can reclaim those cough drop accounts if your communicators change, if they move, if they leave your group, or you can gift those to the communicator if you want them to be able to take them that, that account with them as they move on to other things. All right, so let's take a quick tour of the cough drop program and kind of get to know some of the features and functions that you'll probably be using on a regular basis as you work within the program. So let's head back over to cough drop and I'm going to exit out of speak mode and I'm going to head to my dashboard page, which is kind of the starting place when you're using cough drop. So this is where you will come when you first enter the program. Um, it's your dashboard page and you have some readily available things of here for your use. You can go straight into speak mode. You can view, view reports for your account or you can see some modeling ideas. But if you hit the extras option, you'll open some more um, opportunities. I told you that you could use that setup tool at any time that it was pinned to your dashboard and here it is right here. You can hit that learn and set up and you'll be able to go through those basic setup options. So if you missed something or you decided to want, you wanted to change something, this is one place that you can do that. You can also use this new board button to create a board from scratch. So maybe I want to create a board about, I don't know, animals. So I'm going to hit create board. I can decide how big it is, how many buttons it'll have. And then I can start adding um, animals to this, to this board. As you can see, CoughDrop will automatically select an image for you, but you don't, you're not stuck with that image. If you open the button settings window, you can come and search for an appropriate picture that'll match your desire for that particular board. CoughDrop does open up, uh, have options for several image libraries. As you can see, we do offer PCS board maker images and purchase access to those images for $25 per account, but you're not required to use those. We do have several free image libraries that are available. We also offer a connection to a LessonPix account. So if you have purchased a LessonPix account, you can connect your LessonPix images to your CoughDrop account and use those images as you uh, create boards and buttons within the program. However, you can also use these free accounts. If I want to use a different image library, I can click on that and hit search, and that will give me some options for additional images available within these different image libraries. And I can choose to use those on my speech board. While I am in edit mode, I can rearrange the buttons that are here. I can move things around and just kind of make this board whatever I would like it to be. And then make sure that you save your changes when you are done with, with that. Okay, so back on our dashboard, I can also view all of my supervisees that I watch over. So I have four um, communicators that are my, um, my student accounts within my program, my, my account. And from my dashboard, I can reach their information. I can enter speak mode as any one of these students, which will automatically take me to their speech board. Uh, whatever is set as their home board is what will come up when we enter speak mode for that student. And this will allow them to speak and the, any button presses will count as their communicator speech. If I want to model for a student, I can hit the model button, and then I will be able to model words and phrases on their speech set, on their home board and their, their speech boards, but the button presses will count as modeled words instead of as communicator speech. I can go to the communicator's 
account page by hitting account or I can tap on their user icon also to reach their account or maybe I want to see the usage reports for a particular user and I can pull those up and see how things are going. This graph will show me speech per day. You can see it'll show me the total words used, the unique words that have been used by that communicator and it'll also show me words that have been modeled for that communicator. I can come over here and see which words have been used and how many times in a particular time frame. I can create a word cloud of their most commonly used words, um, which I may want to print and send home to their parents or hang on the wall or put in a book of remembrance to kind of remember how they've changed and adjusted and grown over time. I can do the same thing for modeled words. These are my most often modeled words, and I can create a word cloud for those modeled words as well. So maybe we want to have a comparison and see who's using which one more. We could set a goal um, relating to that. As I scroll down, I can see reports relating to core words versus fringe words or the words broken down by part of speech. So I kind of know, am I only using nouns? Am I only using verbs? Am I making sure to get lots of usage of different things in there? The next section shows me the time of day that usage is happening for this particular communicator. As you can see, it'll show you hour by hour and day of the week. So maybe I can see that communication is taking place um, in the classroom at school, but really not much at home. And that might give me good motivation to go to the parents and say, hey, I can see that not so much is going on at home. What can we do to support you? Or what do you need? Or what can we do to help the communicator have better access to speech when they're at home? Or maybe it's the other way around and you're seeing tons of communication happening at home and not so much at school. And you need to say, hey, parents, it looks like you're doing a great job. What can we do to improve? What are you doing that we're not doing? Um, it also helps everybody kind of have a little bit of accountability that other people can see what's happening within that account. The last section shows the activation heat map for the account, which will show where the basic button presses are happening on an account. This is great, especially uh, to help you know if a particular area is being avoided within the account and maybe that's because it, there's a wheelchair mount that's in the way so they can't reach these words. Maybe there's some left or right side neglect and they're only able to see and access information on one side of the screen or maybe this is where broccoli is on the, the uh, communication set and so they just never hit those because they don't really ever want to say broccoli but that gives you information that you can then adjust and make make some changes on the account as needed. Um, while you're on the user's account page, that's where we, um, we're on the reports page right now, but you have access to some additional options here. I can go to the user's logs and messages, which will show every word that has been spoken by the particular communicator. So I know by day by day what's going on and how things have adjusted. I can go in and highlight particular words so that I can remember on this day, they said mom for the first time or they asked for this thing and I want to remember that I can go highlight those so that I can find them later on. I can also um, show the messages that have happened within the account and um, remember the notes that have been given by different people. Um, within this account page I can set goals for my communicator. I can browse some goals that are already available within the program that can then be um, tracked by CockDrop, or you can create your own goal and decide how it will be set up and how it will be tracked. Anytime you want to return to your dashboard page, you can hit this CockDrop icon in the top left corner and that will bring you straight back to your dashboard. Let's head into speak mode and um, kind of get a feel for some of the things that are available in there. If you supervise different accounts, you will when you hit speak mode, have the option to come into speak mode as any of your other um, communicators, but I'm just going to go into speak mode as myself. Here we go. On this one. And I'm going to hide my sidebar again, but while you're in speak mode, of course, you can press buttons. I, you, we. To speak particular words. You'll notice these buttons with a highlighted corner. Those will open to an additional set Need. of words um, relating to that first word and give you more words that you're able Toast. to speak. I have my system set so that when once I hit a word, it will bring me straight back to my home page. But if you would like to stay on a particular board until you choose to leave that board, so maybe I wanna hit five buttons on this page, I can go in and change my preferences so that um, I will stay on the board until I specifically choose to navigate away from it instead of returning directly to my home board when I, when I choose a speech button. Within this 
speak mode section, there are some additional things that I can do. I can choose remember this, which will hold that phrase that I've composed right here in this menu so I can access it again. Maybe it's something I'm going to need to say repeatedly for a little while, or maybe it's something I use on a regular basis and I want to save it. I can do that here. I can also choose the share this option which will allow me to then post my words and phrases on Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus. If I have connected accounts, I can email them to a specific person. So maybe I want to compose a phrase for grandma for her birthday. Um, we can send that to her or we can use it as a link. We can give it to someone else as a link. Um, it will also come with a small explanation of what AAC is and how this particular phrase was composed so that people can better understand where the phrase is coming from. You also have a menu under your user icon here, and this is a, a place where you can find some additional options. Because I am a supervisor, I can choose to switch communicators while I'm in a speak mode session, so I can speak as someone else or model for someone else if I decide that I need to do that. I can use the find a button feature in order to find a particular button or word. I just enter that word and then select it, and Coughdrop will highlight a path showing me exactly how to reach that particular word or phrase if it is available within the board set. And if it's not available within the board set, you can either use the keyboard to compose that or you can add the word or phrase um, later on. Also on this option, I can choose to stay on this board, which means that even if I hit a button that would normally move me to another board, it's going, that option is going to be blocked for the time being um, so that I stay on this board until I go and release that board lock. You can see within this section also you can pause logging if you have enabled it. Logging is turned off on an account by default, but you will not keep track of logs and have those reports available to you unless you go and turn on logging. However, if it's turned on and for some reason you need to pause it, you can come in here and pause logging. Once I am done in speak mode, if I exit that option, I will be brought to the board actions page for this particular board set. Um, and from here I have some additional options. I'm just gonna show you real quick. You can also reach the board actions page by hitting this eye icon and then selecting board actions, which will take you to that same place. But here we are on the board actions page and I have some additional opportunities available to me. I can choose board details which will allow me to translate the board, or maybe I want to swap images to a different image library. So for example, maybe I, ha I want all my um, pictures to be PCS or board maker pictures. I can swap all of the images to those different libraries. I can record a message, or I can delete the board here on that setting. Or I could choose to make a copy. We talked about having your own copy of a board rather than um, trying to edit a cough drop owned copy of the board. Your own copy can be edited and adjusted in any way you'd like. I can choose to set this board as my home board. It already is, so that one um, doesn't make a lot of sense. But if I want to add a board to the sidebar, this is where I'll do it. I'll hit that add to sidebar and then that will show up on the sidebar that um, I showed you in speak mode. I can also choose to download this board in order to save it for later, or maybe I want to email it to another CoughDrop user so that they can load it into their account, and I can choose to print the board. If I print the board, I will get a PDF version of this board, which can then be printed out either with a printer that you have, or you can send it like to a, a FedEx or something like that and print a poster-sized copy of your board in order to have in a classroom um, or to send home and be available for additional use. Okay, so maybe I want to make adjustments and changes to my board. I'm going to hit Edit Board to open this board in Edit Mode. Now, any button that I tap on, I will open the Button Settings window, and I can make some adjustments and changes from here. Under the General Settings, I can change the label. The label is the word that shows up on the button, and when you are in Speak Mode, it's the word that normally will be spoken by the button as well when it is hit. I can choose not to show the label by checking this box to hide the label. I can give the word a delineation as a noun or a verb. I can change the background color or the border color as needed. And I can choose to hide this button if I need to in order to, to keep a, a communicator from being overwhelmed. Under the picture setting, I can search for a particular image in order to find what I'd like to use on this particular board. So I can search for two and pick any kind of 
image that works for me on that. However, I'm not limited to that. I can use these different image libraries as well. And I don't even have to search for the word that's on my button label. That's what it will default. It will default to searching for the word on your button label. But if you want to search for a different word, you can do that without changing the button label. Just go ahead and make that adjustment. Under action, I can choose what happens when this particular button is pressed. So the system will default to add the button to the vocalization box and it will speak whatever is on the label. However, you can also choose to have the button link to a different board. You can open to a website or a browser tab. So maybe you want to link to a YouTube video or a Tar Heel reader book. You can do that here by linking that to this particular button. You can link to open an, ac ac excuse me, an application or you can activate a connected tool. Under sound, the program will default to speak whatever is on the button label, but you can choose to record a word or phrase. So maybe you have somebody who has ALS and will be losing their voice and you want to record their voice on some of these speech buttons. This is an option to do that. You can also upload a sound. So I have a couple of speech boards, one that has some everyday sounds like a laugh or a cry or a sigh or a kiss sound. Um, and you can upload those sounds onto a particular speech board. Or you can have, I have an animal sound or a piano board where if you hit a button, it, it has a different piano tone. There are a lot of things that you can do to encourage communication and to encourage use of this AAC. Also, while you are in edit mode, you can select the paint feature uh, to make some additional changes. So maybe I want to have the background of a bunch of images to be a different color. And I can choose that color and then just adjust them as needed. This is also where I can hide or unhide buttons. So if I choose to hide some of these buttons, I can tap on them and they will no longer be seen by the communicator on the speech board. You can see that they are in a shadowed version here. They're still accessible for me to make adjustments and changes, but they won't be shown on the speech board. You can do the same thing with board um, links within a speech button. So this particular board opens to another speech board and I can hide that link for now or the, if this opens to a website or a video or something like that I could hide those as well for the time being. Let's head now to our preferences page and take a look at some of the other things that you can do on the account. If I choose to go to my preferences page I can adjust how my account functions. Most of these preferences will happen for the entire account no matter what device you use to open your account. But there are a few preferences that are specific to um, each device and we'll look at those in a minute. But first, there are some adjustments that you can make to the account. So you can choose to have the, the program vocalize after each button press or if you uncheck that box, the program will only vocalize when you tap the vocalization window in speak mode. You can choose to automatically return to your home board after you hit a button or if you uncheck that, then you'll stay on the specific board that you've navigated to until you choose to navigate away from it. Uh, this is where you would turn on logging in this logging section to allow CoughDrop to keep track of your logs and create reports relating to your communicator. You have some additional options about sharing things and how speak mode will function, whether or not you allow external links that would allow you to open things outside of the CoughDrop program like YouTube videos or Tar Heel Reader Brook you can choose a little bit about your image background color and um, whether or not to fill spaces on the program. You can choose the way buttons are selected. So generally speaking, I have mine set to, re re to select based on where I release my pointer, but you can have it adjust to select where you first touch the screen. You can also select to select something even without a release after a particular amount of time. So if you have someone who generally drags their finger across a screen, you can have it select once they remain on that area for a particular amount of time. You can change the words that are listed as core vocabulary words within your program. And when you model, you can choose to use two finger button presses as modeled words instead of communicator speech. With the buttons that I showed that you can hide, you can have them chose to show a grid line around them show as the dimmed out version or hide them completely within the account when they are hidden. You can also adjust your sidebar. Uh, I showed you how to add button boards to your sidebar, but you can rearrange the setting of your sidebar or delete boards from your sidebar here in this section. 
you can also choose not to show your sidebar or not have it on your account if that's what you choose. Now we get down into the device preferences section and these are preferences that are specific to a device. So for example, maybe I want the button spacing to be a little bit larger on my smartphone than I do on my iPad and I can make it my adjustments for that here within the button settings section. This is also where you would enable any kind of scanning or eye gaze devices that you would like to link. So if you're going to be using a switch or an eye gaze device, you would make those adjustments within your device preferences section of your account. It's also where you will choose a voice on your account. Every device has built-in voices available and you can see those listed here and you can adjust them and try them, test out a voice, find the one that you like. However, for devices like iPads, Android tablets, anything using the Google app, you can also use our premium voices if you have a paid account. Premium voices are not available on free supervisor accounts because they do come in at an additional cost to us, but we do make them available for anybody who has a premium account who has paid for their account. In the premium voice section, we use acapella. We do have a partnership with acapella voice. And you can select a child or a teenage male, female account or voice. You can also choose voices that are in different languages. Drop does have a translation feature which allows you to use to create speech boards and buttons in different languages. And you can pick an appropriate voice to match those particular languages as well. You also have the option to change the voice rate and pitch and volume. These will not work for every voice, but they do work for most voices. Anytime you make an adjustment to your preferences page, be sure to save your preferences so that they will show up on your account. Um, if you don't save them, it will revert to whatever your original options were before you made any adjustments. We're going to go back to the dashboard page because I have one additional thing I'd like to show you real quick. Anytime you have questions or concerns, you can always hit the support button at the bottom of your cough drop pages to come and find helps or to reach out to us. We do have support articles and videos that are available to give you information that often answer questions about how the program works or things that uh, the program is able to do. You can find those in these links. You can use the YouTube videos if you like, or the videos are also available on our uh, support articles. But feel free to reach out to us anytime. Send us a message with a question or a concern, and we're happy to try to help you find exactly what you need while you're using the Cough Drop program. All right. We never know when someone will have something to say and that people should not be limited because they aren't in speech or they aren't at their desk at that moment. A person's AAC device should always be available to them. When we have a student in class that sometimes speaks out of turn or says things that may not be appropriate, we don't tape their mouth shut and make it impossible for them to talk. And an AAC user is no different. It's not fair for us to force them to be silent when they may have something to say. We need to teach them and support them and encourage them in any way that we can. Communication and learning takes place everywhere. It's at home, in school, and therapy. It takes place at lunch and on the playground, during the summer, at the doctor's office, at the movies, in the office, in the car, everywhere. And a person should be able to communicate whatever questions or concerns or thoughts or ideas they have, no matter what's happening around them. Our goal, just like yours, is to help people be able to really communicate. Communication is more than just labeling items or even voicing preferences, although those are good places to start. Communication is expressing feelings, sharing ideas, it's saying no, it's telling a joke, it's making friends. Communication is building relationships. We want to empower communicators and families, teachers, therapists, and other supporters to move toward that kind of solid communication. And that's what we're trying to do here at Cough Drop. And we want to help you and your team be able to do that. Thank you for taking time to be part of this Cough Drop implementation session. Feel free to reach out to me. If you have any questions or concerns, you can reach me at melissa at mycoughdrop.com. I look forward to working with you as you start working with Cough Drop. Thank you. Have a great day.